Okay, so we're in section 2.3 of Al Grosha's book, Developmental Math 2 Workbook. This section is uh, proportions. So what are proportions and how do you solve them? The book doesn't really give you a definition of what are proportions. So we're going to talk about that first. A proportion is simply stated as two ratios or fractions that are equal, just like this, A over B equals C over D. Uh, you could use real fractions, one-half equals two-fourths. These are proportions. And there is a, a rule for proportions. It's called the law of proportions that says that the cross products are equal. The product of the means equals the product of the extremes. So when you're solving proportions, this is the idea that one times four equals 2 times 2. If this is a true proportion, then these two products will be equal. And we're going to use that law uh, while we're solving proportions. All right, so here's the first example. Write a proportion that solves the problem. A man can eat five hamburgers in two and a half minutes. How many hamburgers can the man eat in 10 minutes? So we're going to set up the proportion, and we're going to solve the proportion. And when we're solving, we're going to use this, pro this uh, rule over here to make an equation so that we can solve for an unknown. All right, when you're using proportions to solve, uh, you need to identify two units or two kinds of things that are being compared. And in this question, the hamburgers are being compared to the minutes. So when I set up my proportion, I'm going to start with fraction bars like this. And I'm going to put units in. These will be hamburgers comparing to minutes, the same units on both sides. So hamburgers compared to minutes. And then the first part of the story, a man can eat five hamburgers in two and a half minutes. Those numbers will go here. But since you already put the units in, you know what numbers need to go where. So five hamburgers in two and a half minutes, or 2.5. And then the second part of the story tells you what numbers to put over here. So how many hamburgers can the man eat in 10 minutes? Well, we know we have 10 minutes, so the minutes are going to go down here. But we don't know how many hamburgers, so that will be our variable x. Now we can use that rule we talked about above. The, product, the cross products are equal. So we know that 5 times 10 will equal 2.5 times x, 2.5x. And this is an equation that we've already learned how to solve. So we're going to simplify it and solve. 5 times 10 is 50, 2.5x. All right. To isolate this x, we have multiply here. So we're going to need to divide. We're going to divide both sides by 2.5. Well, these reduce to make 1x. And we have this decimal division going on here, which we're going to do over here. 50 divided by 2.5. OK. If you don't remember the decimal division, remember that you have to make this a whole number. So this decimal needs to go back one place, which means that this decimal inside also needs to go back one place. So this is going to become 500. So 25 into 500. So that makes 20. So x equals 20. Now, I'm going to go back to the original question see if that makes sense. A man can eat five hamburgers in two and a half minutes. How many hamburgers can the man eat in 10 minutes? 20 hamburgers. That makes sense. All right, this is the next example. A motorcycle can travel 600 miles on 20 gallons of gasoline. How many gallons of gas are needed to travel 100 miles? So we're going to set up the proportion first. And again, we're going to start with the fraction bars, start with a couple fraction bars, and the units. Okay, what's being compared? The motorcycle can travel 600 miles on 20 gallons. So we're comparing miles and gallons. So I'm going to put miles up here and gallons down here. And it doesn't really matter if you want to switch them, put gallons on the top and miles on the bottom, as long as you do the same thing on both sides. Okay, these need to be the same. And these need to be the same. And then these numbers come from the first part of the story. A man can travel 600 miles on 20 gallons. So we're going to put 600 miles on 20 gallons. 
And these numbers come from the second part of the story. How many gallons are needed to travel 100 miles? So this is our number, 100. And since you already put the M in, you know the 100 goes here. And we're looking for how many miles? How many gallons? So now we're going to solve the proportion. And again, we're going to use that rule that tells us the cross products are equal. So 600x equals 20 times 100. And we're going to simplify and solve. So we have 600x equals 20, 2,000. 20 times 100 is 2,000. And now we need to divide by 600 to isolate the x. So this is why we learned how to solve equations in the last section. So these reduce to make x. Uh, you can reduce these zeros off just like this. So you have 20 divided by 6 here. Which is not going to make a whole number, but we can make it a mixed number. So that's 3 and 2 sixths, which reduces to make 3 and 1 third. Uh, and what are the units? What were we solving for here? We're solving for gallons. So there we go, 3 and 1 third gallons. All right, let's try number 2. Jim can type 120 words in 3 minutes. How many minutes will it take for Jim to type 500 words? So what are we comparing? We're comparing words with minutes. So we're going to start with the fraction bars. We're comparing words, these W, with minutes. All right, these come from the first part of the story. 120 words in three minutes. So we have 120 words for three minutes. And these come from the second part of the story. How many minutes will it take Jim to type 500 words? So these are words, so that's good. they're going to go up here. And that means X is down here. We're looking for how many minutes. All right. To solve, we're going to use the cross products. So 120X equals 3 times 500. Simplify. 120X equals 1,500. We divide by 120 to isolate that x. We get x equals, okay, 150 divided by 12. So it goes into 15 one time. 12 goes into 30 twice. And that means we have 6 left over, so 6 twelfths. 12 and 6 twelfths makes 12 and 1 half. And what units? What were we looking for? We were looking for minutes. You could also, if you wanted up here, you could change this to a decimal. You don't have to do fractions. I like fractions, but you could change this to a decimal. This would come out to be 12.5 if you divide it out to be a decimal. It's perfectly fine to use decimals. All right, proportions can be used in geometry, especially with these triangles. Triangles are similar if their corresponding angles are congruent or equal, or the ratios of their corresponding sides are equal. Okay, these are called similar triangles. Similar means that these two triangles have the exact same shape, their angles are equal, they're just different sizes. We usually label one as the large and one as the small, and that helps us with um, setting up the proportions. Uh, solve for x using proportions. Okay, x is the missing side right here. We also have a missing side over here. Okay, when you're solving for a missing side in a triangle, it's important to identify where you have two corresponding sides that you actually know. And corresponding just means that they're in the same position. If you look at this 8 and the 4, they correspond. They're in the same position on the two triangles. The 24 corresponds to the Y, but since we don't know Y, that's really not going to help us. The X 
corresponds to the 10. And x is what we're solving for. So we're going to start with the two sides that we know that are corresponding, and that would be the 8 and the 4. When we set up this kind of proportion, it's best to label things as large over small. Okay? And the corresponding sides, the large was 8, and the small was 4. Those are the two corresponding sides that we know. Okay, now we're looking for x. x is in the large triangle, so we're going to put it up here on the top because these are all for the large triangle up here on the top. These will be for the small triangle. What does the x correspond to in the small triangle? It corresponds to the 10. So we're going to put the 10 here. And here we have a proportion that we can use the cross products to write an equation for. So we're going to have 8 times 10. is equal to 4 times x, or 4x. 80 equals 4x. Divide by 4 to isolate that x. And we get x equals 20. So, this, so the side that's labeled with x equals 20. And of course, we could use this, this information to find y if we wanted to. Now that we know that x is 20, we could find y, but well, we're not going to do that. Let's go to the next. Solve for x using proportions. Okay, these triangles are kind of difficult to see. If you see the two triangles, there's a large triangle out here on the outside, but then by putting this piece in the middle here, we find this triangle, which is similar to the large triangle. It's the exact same shape. It just has different size sides. Okay. So the large, I like to redraw these triangles if I can. The large triangle, like this, and the sides on the large triangle are 20, x, and we don't know this side, do we? It doesn't even have a variable on it. We're just going to put a question mark here. The small triangle, which is the same shape, has a 5 and a 12 here, and again, we don't know anything about this side. I don't think we're going to need any information about that side to solve this. All right, we're solving for x. And if you look at these two triangles, this x corresponds to the 12 on the small triangle, and the 20 corresponds to the 5. So if we do large over small, we'll have 20 over 5 corresponds to x over 12. And we're going to go ahead and solve this using the cross products. 20 times 12 equals 5 times x. 20 times 12 is 240. And then when we divide by 5, 240 divided by 5 is, let's see, 5 is into 24. 4 times, 5 goes into 48 times, so x should equal 48. When you divide this out, I didn't write it here in long division, I just did it mentally, but when you divide this out, you'll get x equals 48. So let's look at this example number 2. Solve for x using proportions. Given the two similar triangles, so th we have the same situation here. There's a big triangle, and by using this piece right here, we'll be given a smaller triangle. So if we redraw them, let's see if we have room over here to redraw them. The large triangle has a 25. An 8, well, is this 18 here? Or is it 18 plus x? Well, I think it's 18 plus x because if you look, I think the 18 only corresponds to this piece all the way up to here. So 18 plus x would have to be that piece. Okay, so we need to make this 18 plus x. Okay, and then we have the smaller triangle, which has a 5 here, and I believe it's just x on the bottom. So if we do large 
over small. All right, the 25 corresponds to the 5, so we can use that. 25 over 5, and the 18 plus x corresponds to the x. Okay, so that's just this side corresponding to this side. So this looks really complicated, but once you do your cross products, you'll find that it's, it's just an equation that you know how to solve. So 25 times x equals 5 times 18 plus x. And you need to use the parentheses there since the 5 has to be times uh, both terms. So we have 25x equals, we're going to use distributive property here, 90 plus 5x. All right, if I want to put all both x terms on the same side, I should subtract 5x from both sides. So I have 20x equals 90. And then I'm going to divide by 20 to isolate that x. Okay, so if we reduce this, we get x equals 9 over 2, which is 4 and a half. 